Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Take two, this time with my credit card and all the numbers cl not clearly in frame. <laughs> and my credit card is like the biggest troll of this. Like it's constantly finding its way into the frame. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, back doing comic book reviews. I had my last video uh, was weird, but it did really well. It's an hour and 15 minutes. And... Um, uh, go check it out. A uh, couple hundred comments saying it's the best video I ever did. Um, I was really excited about it, uh, but the uh, the reaction is um, better than I had expected. Um, I expected a lot of people to say, I'm not watching this. <laughs> it's just like when I turn and I see this page, I go, I'm not reading that. Um, so this is uh, Tony Stark Iron Man number six. And, ah, hmm. So, uh, Diana read it, <laughs> and she thought it was fine, uh, but she was also kind of reading it. Uh, she had a lot of questions, so I think it was more of just a, uh, we were on the subway. It was just to pass the time. Um, uh, she successfully uh, uh, lobbied for a smartphone years before I wanted to get her one. Uh, I said, uh, I'm, I'm leaning against it. It's, it's up to you to convince me. And uh, she basically brought up that uh, she's a... Uh, dying of boredom on the on the subway and I was like yeah I can see that I sp I'd spent like in two and a half days in New York City I spent like eight hours in a subway and I was dying by the end of it um I gotta say having a short commute the last time I lived there was that's the only way to fly uh but anyway this is Tony Stark Iron Man um <laughs> it's this this is just weird like I you know before I do a video, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh, this is going to be trash, and I'm excited, or this is going to be good. And sometimes it flips, sometimes I'm wrong. Um, but usually at the end of reading it, I have a very, very strong thesis of what it's going to be, and I have a title. And d mine is just like, bam, bam. I don't know. Like, I'm b almost rendered subverbal by this. It is good and bad and terrible all at the same time uh the weird so i didn't quit it was a page turner um uh it's got a good um pace although pace is one of my issues with dan slot he's a uh, <laughs> he's good at establishing like a frantic pace the problem is that kind of everything moves at that uh, pace i i catch myself sometimes especially at the grocery store unnecessarily doing everything faster like, I'll, I'll be going down an aisle, and then I'll, I'll be like, I'm rushing. I'm like, why, why am I rushing? Just relax. <laughs> it's groceries. Chill out. And then I, I notice that all the time, you know, just doing little things. Why am I doing this so fast? So we start off, we got a, a, a good uh, cover. It's very dramatic. I'm not exactly sure what's happening, but I see the uh, hero struggling, and he seems overwhelmed. That's always very interesting to me. That's very enticing. I want to I want to know what what could be, you know, he's Tony Stark, Iron Man's pretty OP. What what can make him have this fearful expression? So I start off I, I don't read this stuff. I don't. I don't. The only thing that that was uh, uh jumping out to me that got me very worried was this name, Jeremy Whitley. So it says story Dan Slot. Script Jeremy Whitley and Dan Slott. So usually that means Dan came up with all the things that happen. And it sounds like Jeremy did the, um, you know, the, what do you call it? Uh, dialogue and stuff like that. Or maybe he did like the little fine points in it. But uh, this is a little red flag because I remember this happened with the Avengers like a year ago. It was Mark Wade, and then suddenly it was Mark Wade and Jeremy Whitley. And it was like this not that hard like this isn't some major magnum opus why do you need to tap in a super talent boy like jeremy whitley that's to me i just interpreted that as i'm already losing interest so jeremy's cheap i think he might be on exclusive um yeah just have him finish and i'm really really not interested um so we start over here and we got uh andy bang finally living up to his name uh uh Blew the back out of <laughs> Tony Stark's mother. I just... Uh. This guy is weird. Because um, 
a couple things. Number one, he's really, really boring, and he's apparently kind of the main character. It's Tony Stark Iron Man. We had Riri Williams for a couple years, and it's Tony Stark Iron Man, but Tony Stark's not really the main character. It's this guy, Andy Bang, who's just nothing. First of all, I'm calling shenanigans because we did a flashback where he was like in his 20s. He met Stark in his teens. So he's only got to be about like 50, maybe 52. What? This this is 80. Asian men do not look like this when they are 52. Like what has, how rough has your life been, dude? And he, he always looks like shit. So, a uh, comic book is a, is a visual medium, and it's and, and it's very idealized. I, Andy Bang does not fit. He's he's like a pleasant coworker in real life, a pleasant neighbor, but he's not compelling. And I don't want to look at his Asian eighty like the, no you. Why do you look so old? Um, and then we just get Tony Stark's real mom, which is just some... I believe it's Bendis. It's got... Ben, it's just stupid. And it's... His mom was a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent and his dad was a Hydra agent. Oh, you remember... Um, his father in the movies? That he's exactly like? Remember in the comics for years they drew them looking exactly alike? Well, that was his adopted father. It's just an amazing coincidence that his adopted father looks exactly like him and has almost all of his personality traits and his genius. And then we get this, who is a former 80s rocker. Cool? No, it's not cool. Stop it. Um, so uh, we're uh, continuing in this storyline about the Escape, which is basically Ready Player One, uh, except for it's exactly Ready Player One. And, um, I don't know, it was like, like I said, it had this good pace, but there's something very odd about this. It's, it's a number one. Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, it's really issue 606, but it's a reboot and we haven't had Tony Stark and it's been this relentless pace. Now there has been cool things. There was a cool bit with, um, uh, Rhodey coming back to life and now he wants to be in this flying tank instead of a. Iron Man armor. Uh, there have been some interesting concepts. Last issue had it was about Arno Stark, and it was really good. Um, but this one is, I just, I understand his whole thing is he's he's a genius and he does a bunch of stuff. But scenes like this, a slow scene, should have been with Tony, not with this advanced Asian, uh, advanced aging, not Asian. Uh, minor boring character so the escape there's something wrong with it and it's uh, uh then we get to then we get to see this um this guy <laughs> now he's evil come on freckles and he's white of course he's evil that's redundant so there's this evil bully who didn't really do anything that bad except for curse he was in a game and uh one of the characters said uh Hey guy, I'm in here with my kid. Think you can ease up on the potty mouth? And he's like, he just starts cursing. It really hasn't, wasn't that bad. But he's presented as some sort of proud boys incel school shooter because he got angry playing a video game. So um, then we cut to uh, a lot of oldie Olsen take on tech. Um, a little... A humanized robot who forgets to power her batteries. Uh, like I said, one one of the biggest problems with this is it's uh, a, a tech-based um, series with no research in it. Um, it kind of feels like it was written 20 years ago. One of the, one of my favorite mainstream comic sci-fi writers is Warren Ellis because Warren Ellis will actually take some time to research. Now he won't. You know, he'll read a 15-page article in Scientific American. And, you know, he's not writing, you know, white papers. But you can see that he understands things and he, and he grasps, you know, new concepts. This is, like, really cut and paste. It's like, the technology has something wrong with it. It's not working the place it's supposed to. I wonder if something nefarious... Oh, and yeah, so... 
I don't know. It's it's got it's got a good pace. Pace is uh, pace is a big deal. Pace can fool you into being entertained, which is actually very very similar to actually being entertained. I noticed this in Spectre. Spectre, the the latest James Bond movie from like I don't know two years ago, um, and I would say that movie sucks. But when I saw it, I was actually enjoying it because it has a real good clip to it. Then you walk out of the theater and it's just makes no sense. It's basically two hours of plot holes. The entire plot is a hole. But uh, when you're walking, watching it, it's good. So this is kind of like this. There's some cutesy, bootsy humor that doesn't really land. And this is just <laughs> so bad. Oh, gosh. Um, but overall, ah, no, I can't recommend this. It's it's been It's a story that's been done a million times. It's feels like your grandma writing a tech blog um and it just kind of ends didn't even really end on like a, on a cliffhanger it just kind of ended oh wait this, then this guy joined the proud boys or, um okay he's a school shooter they're dangerous uh so overall yeah yeah and then they have this kind of weird creepy gross uh cover He's got brown hair. Is that supposed to be Tony Stark? Uh, but then they get all cutesy pie with the description. And, like, this description goes on forever. I just kind of want to wrap it. I just feel like, uh, no. I, yeah. <laughs> I don't need you r ripping off Ready Player One and knowing nothing about tech besides, you know, taking the disc out of the PlayStation 2 and then blowing on it. Like, do some more research into tech. Focus on Iron Man. We don't care about your super boring side characters that you created. I don't care about Andy Bang or Tony Stark's biological mother who was an 80s rocker. <laughs> yeah, sometimes when a story is, you know, it's, it's something, you get an idea and it's interesting, but then you say it out loud. Like, I feel like a lot of Bendis's and Dan Slott's uh, problems are, uh, it's, it, it sounds good in their head and then it goes onto the paper and they never say it out loud. To which someone goes, why is this interesting? So, there's your video tell. Why did you think this was interesting? <laughs> yeah, th this is a this is a thumbs down for me. Um, uh, I want to see Tony Stark. I want uh, more of him dealing with this. You obviously have an interest to do a tech story, but you are not doing some tech research. There's a lot of interesting things happening in the, in the tech world. For in for example wireless keyboards <laughs> just bringing up stuff that became popular 15 years ago which probably sounds cutting edge to dance lot he's like what probably spilled probably spilled coffee everywhere wireless keyboards how do you power it what if it runs out of electricity oh yeah that's that's gonna be the next storyline uh, uh tony stark invents uh, a wireless mouse <laughs> but uh, anyway uh thanks for <laughs> Yeah, uh, a bad guy uh, puts a uh, spy camera into uh, the ball on the bottom of his uh, 1995 mouse. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the uh, Patreon who gave to the GoFundMe and the Indiegogo. And I'll have uh, more new comic reviews up later today. Thanks. Bye.